Proper shaping is one of those retouching things that will set your images apart if you're doing it well and will set your images apart if you're not doing it at all because a really, really well retouched image that hasn't been shaped, um, you know, is not going to look as polished as it can be. So, you know, let's just jump into Photoshop and I'll show you what I'm talking about here and I'll show you what to look out for and some techniques to do this correctly. So what do I mean by shaping? Um, this is basically just a fancy way of saying liquefying, but I don't use the term liquefy because that makes us think that we're liquefying people's bodies and that's not really uh, what we're going for here. Um, that's not the main goal is not liquefying people's bodies. It's liquefying and shaping silhouettes. So the by silhouettes, I mean the outlines of uh, the shapes that we have in our image. So, you know, it's kind of the fabric edges, um, the product edges, we want to minimize any distractions that might be happening um, in our photo along the edges of our, of our products or, or uh, the elements in the photo. So um, the easiest way we are going to do that is using Liquify, using our pen tool, using our stamp tool, um, and using those tools together to uh, basically just clean up the edges. So. In order to do this, um, well, and, and here's an example of what I'm talking about. So like with this fashion image here, um, this is after shaping and this is before. So see how much of a difference that makes. Um, so, you know, this is something that you really want to pay attention to, especially with e-commerce photos um, and e-commerce on, on figure images. This is something that you're going to do probably to every image, especially minimizing these kind of lumps um, on the edges of a fabric where they don't exactly fit as snug as you'd like. So to do this, what we want to do is duplicate our background layer. And um, we're going to go to uh, layer and convert that to a smart object first. So the benefit of this is that once it's a smart object, we can reliquify over and over again without messing up uh, our background or having that liquify baked into our final edit, which is ideal when our client comes back and changes their mind, um, as they do often. <laughs> so um, now that we've got a smart object here, I'm going to rename it liquify. Liquify, if I can spell, and go to filter and liquify. Now, I usually keep my pressure and my density here on the um, uh, forward warp tool set around 50. I feel like that just works for me and the, you know, the way that my Wacom tablet is set up and, and the pen sensitivity. Um, you can play around with that uh, to, to suit your taste. But the most important thing here is the size of your brush. So your brush size, you want to keep slightly larger than the area that you're liquefying. So if I come up here, um, I don't want to have it, you know, too small because then we're going to start to push too many pixels around and that's hard to control. Um, so if we make it larger, now we can make uh, more subtle moves and actually control uh, the amount of like bleed and, and, and warping that's happening along the edge. Um, so, you know, you're going to go basically around the entire edge of your image um, and just push in and out and make sure that uh, all of these edges are smooth um, and you know it really is a simple it's not a very complex <laughs> topic here um, but it's really important and it's worth um, noting um, now you know honestly probably wouldn't do too much more than here along her arm um, because we want things to look natural we want it to look uh, realistic so you know lumps are fine imperfections are fine we just don't want anything that's drawing attention. Now, when we get down here, see how we have such a fine pattern in her jeans? This is a pretty high fidelity image. Um, what we're gonna wanna do is use the pen tool for this to actually fix that edge um, outside of Liquify because if we do it in Liquify, we're gonna start to like smush areas um, in ways that might not end up looking that great so you know and it also is a little it could be a little quicker to do it outside of liquify so let me hit okay on that actually i'm gonna undo this just to be able to show you the example um okay so hit okay on that and you can see just how big of a difference that makes on her shoulder 
Um, and to fix down here, what they, one, one way you could do this is to uh, make a path. Um, I'll show you how I did that. We're gonna make a, a new path and grab our pen tool and basically just create the outline that we want. Um, something like that. And once we have that edge, right click on it and make a selection. Keep our feather radius at zero because this is a pretty sharp edged um, image along these edges. I mean, it, it's a pretty, um, we want a pretty good edge here is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> um, and we're gonna make a new layer, grab our stamp tool and set that to current and below. And now we're gonna be able to stamp through all of our existing layers. So now we just kind of, you know, paint away the areas we don't want. Um, and it's going to follow the restriction of the selection that we made with the pen tool and give us a nice edge. And if we want to paint the inside here, um, control shift I is going to invert our selection. And now we can paint the opposite side. And this really is the way I would do this on um, any image where it wasn't uh, you know, if we're zoomed out, we need to do it quick. If we're working on a lot of e-commerce images, like we're trying to turn out hundreds in a day, um, this is probably the way I would do it and just pin tool the, the silhouette that I want and then whack away the information that I don't need there. Um, now on this particular image, there's a little bit of like artifacting. Do you see this white edge that's happening? That's because this source image was slightly over sharpened when it was sent to me. Um, so, you know, we can recreate this edge going all the way up so that you can't tell uh, where we got rid of it. The quickest way is to create another la new layer, grab our stamp tool again, current and below, and we're just going to stamp the edge. Oops. Stamp the edge. Um, and then just pull that into place right click it or control or command T to transform uh, and then kind of just warp this edge into place, um, which happens a lot more than you'd think, um, especially along the edges of uh, clothing. You might need to recreate or replicate uh, some existing artifacting in order for your edit to look seamless. Um, and then, you know, if there's anything weird here, we could just erase that out. Um, but yeah, that'll happen. You'll run into that more more often than you, than you might expect. Um, so, you know, if you ever need to recreate the artifacting along an edge, that's kind of the quickest way to do it. Um, can also happen with more like we try to remove more but if you can't remove the more and you actually need to like keep it consistent um, because you can't get rid of it in a, in a, along a certain edge, um, that's a good way to copy. Uh, in order to make it uh, seamless. Now, the last thing to cover here is when do you do your shaping? Do you do your shaping first or do you do your shaping last? Now, if it's something where you're very confident um, in the shaping that you've done, you can do it first. And that kind of goes against my um, non-destructive editing rules. And I have another video that goes more in depth about non-destructive editing and what that means um, and your kind of order of operations for editing. Go watch that if you're more interested in that. Um, I'll, I'll just quickly say it doesn't really matter um, unless you're worried that you or your client might change your mind after doing something above your liquify. So in this case, I'm pretty confident uh, that for shaping that's like this, that no one's gonna ask me to unshape that. Like no one's gonna want it to go back to this original photo. Um, but if I knew that the image needed a pretty complex color correction, like say we're gonna change the color of this from green to uh, red, which let's just do this really quickly so that you can see what I'm talking about. Um, Well, actually, yeah, I'm going to use this tool to make this very quick so that you can kind of see what's going to happen. Um, if we need it to change the color of this jacket, and 
and this is going to be a really rough selection because so just you know bear with me this is not how i would do this but um just to get a quick quick selection um i'm going to now do a color range and select all of the greens in this um something like that Hit all right and then um, I'm just going to do a hue saturation to the greens and shift them um, to be, let's go blue. Let's say we wanted a, a blue shirt or even a gray shirt. Let's say we wanted a gray um, or black as a second colorway option. So, you know, if you are gonna do this big of a color correction and you know that this is coming, you know this is a request from your client, I would say do your shaping last because the last thing that you want to do um, is redo making this mask. It's gonna be much easier to redo your shaping on top of this than it will be to redo your mask, redo your color correction, and then redo your shaping if you do your shaping first. So if it's a situation like this, um, shape, first otherwise or shape last otherwise i mean it doesn't matter and by shape last here's what i mean i mean make a uh, after you've done your color correction you then do a stamp visible layer by holding alt merge visible and then pull up your liquify um do any shaping that you might want to do i'll do something pretty dramatic here so you see what i'm talking about and then hit okay now here's if your client wants to change the color now all you have to do is undo the shaping and then you can do a change to this if you had done your shaping down here um, like we had done first so imagine um, we had come here and we had done a liquify shape cool and then the client says after you've done uh, your color correction that they want to re that they want to change your color correction now you've got to re redo this mask and we don't want to redo masks we want to redo liquefying because liquefying is much quicker than masking if that makes sense uh, hopefully hopefully that kind of makes sense um, but yeah there's a longer video on uh, the order of operations and non-destructive editing that goes into this a little more deeply um, so go watch that it'll be linked right here um, and yeah, that is shaping. It is not that difficult. It isn't, you know, particularly crazy topic here, but it's very important to make sure that your retouching is as clean as possible. And that's really going to set you apart. So if you found this helpful, uh, leave a comment, uh, leave a like, I'd appreciate it. Follow if you want to see more videos like this. Um, and, and until next time, uh, thanks for watching.